everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and Merry Christmas Eve. This video is a continuation of the Civil War dress that I've been working on. I did a video on the box pleats and the trimmings on the bottom of the skirt, so you won't want to miss those. See the links below. But today I am focusing on the bodice and how I do the sleeves and the trims and everything. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we are on part two of making the Civil War dress. And I'm on my Pinterest. I did a lot of searching around. And I saved a bunch of pins on different ideas. So I think I have some ideas of what I want to do. I really like that. And the sleeves, kind of hard to see on the camera. But also this right here, there's just a bunch of ruffles going on. I think I may try and mimic the trim that I have on the skirt on the bodice so it looks like it goes together. Do some really deep swoops in the sleeves. So I just went ahead and started cutting out the dress or the bodice. And I did not go into detail on this because I feel like this part is somewhat self-explanatory. Okay, so this was a pagoda sleeve from the last historical dress I made. It was a navy dress. This right here is the inside of the sleeve. So I actually want it to go higher. That's going to sound weird, but I'm going to do a lot more, a bigger undersleeve coming out. And I really want to show that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to draw a line going down like that. And yeah, so I'm going to cut that. Or I'll just kind of curve it off like that. That'll be inside and this will be the outside of the sleeve because I want a drastic change. It will be quite the opening. I have all of my pieces cut out and I'm just going to be sewing them at the side seams and at the shoulder seams. And I'm not doing the lining like I typically would do is connect the lining together. I'm gonna sew the lining and the bodice part separate so that I'll show you in a minute why I'm going to do that. Okay, so I sewed my outer shell here and I have my inner shell and I'm basically going to put them together. So I'm gonna put wrong sides together. Here's my outer shell and I will match the seams. Make sure they're all lined up. Actually, I just realized that I need to put boning in the lining, so I'm going to create a channel and put some boning in there. So I'll be putting it in the darts, the boning in the darts. I'm going to stitch a quarter inch on the inside of the dart and stick the boning in there on all of the darts and in, well, maybe the side seam. I'm not sure. We'll see. All right, so I actually got the boning in, and as you can see, here's a dart and another dart and the side seam, and this is the lining, not the outer piece, the lining, or the outseat. The outside is here. So yeah, they're gonna go wrong sides together like this. So I'm pinning all around the edges and just combining them together. And then I'll work on putting the cording in and finishing off the front after it's all basted together. Okay, so as you can see, we made it one piece. So now it's like one bodice. You open it up and it's all clean on the inside. And I did this because if you look here, usually I would have to roll this over and do a flat felled seam. I have to look it up and make sure that's what it's called. But anyways, instead of doing that, it's just all finished off for me on the inside and I don't have to hand stitch the seam. So I just hid them in between the layers. And the only thing I have to do is finish off the edges at the bottom of the bodice and the front and the neckline. And I'm gonna do a larger stitch and baste all the way around the edges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm cleaning off the front. This is the front part and I'm folding it over according to the length that they showed me on the pattern. And it was two inches to fold over. So make sure it's two and two and two. And folding it under, and I am going to have to hand stitch this down. That's the only bummer. So press it down into place. And then I'm going to hand stitch, and I'm basically just grabbing the lining and stitching because we don't want it to poke through the front. So I'm starting doing my starting stitch. And I'm grabbing the edge. So as you can see, it hasn't grabbed the front at all, but you're just grabbing this cotton lining here. Okay, so I actually have the front all finished up. I put it on the mannequin and the neck of my mannequin is too thick. It's thicker than my neck, like two inches too thick. So it doesn't quite fit all the way around, but it will around my neck. And instead of having it completely round, I decided to kind of come into a slight point. I don't want it to be completely round. so. Just to give a little bit of um, interest there because I'm going to put the trim going in a V so it kind of matches or kind of flows. Okay, so I'm on to the sleeves now and I'm going to be sewing the outer shell and the inner shell, which is the lining, separately. Because I'm going to do essentially the same technique that I did for the bodice, except it's slightly different because it's a sleeve. And so I'm going to go ahead and stitch them up. And then here I am sewing up the inner sleeve lining, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute. So then I'll take all of those pieces and press all of those seams open. This is the sleeve lining, and this is the outer shell of the sleeve. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab one sleeve lining and one outer shell Come on, bamboo, come on. All right, grab one sleeve lining and one outer shell of the sleeve. Flip the outer shell of the sleeve right side out, but leave the lining inside out. And I'll basically just slide this in like this. Line the seams up in the center. This is the bottom of the sleeve. It might look a little weird, but here is the opening. And then the top opening up here. Match the seam at the top as well. And then here's the bottom sleeve. It kind of looks like a big whale of sorts, but it's not a whale, obviously. All right, so Kind of pin the edges of the opening here. Ouch. Just kind of, just to kind of keep it in place. And then here is the inner sleeve lining here. And I'm going to slide that right into the sleeve here. We're just gonna sew all of these layers together. And I pin these right sides together, the inner sleeve lining and the, the shell. So as you can see, I have my inner sleeve lining and my sleeve right here. And when you look inside, here's the lining. You can't see the seam because we did wrong sides facing each other for, if you can see that. And then stitch all those layers together. I did it to both sleeves. And like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, see link below on how I sew my sleeves. I sew from the inside. Okay, so then we have this part where I'm going to work with 
the inner sleeve lining, not the sleeve lining, the inner sleeves lining. And I'm going to work with pressing it outwards like so. Take it and press it to the inner sleeve lining. I might need to get a pressing tool. I'm gonna put this inside. It's like a pressing, I don't know what it's called, like a pressing lump or something, I don't know. And just press it to that inner sleeve lining. This is key to having a crisp edge on your sleeve. So basically pointing it to the sleeve lining, pressing it. Might be kind of kind of difficult, but it's worth getting it right. Press out all of those curves. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's all pressed to the sleeve lining there, or the inner sleeve lining, not the sleeve lining. And then for the next step, you're gonna want to flip this to the inside, the inner sleeve lining. And then because we pressed it, it's gonna be easier to find how to fold it right on that seam there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's like the, the seam in there is right where the pressing is. You don't want the seam to be like this or like that. You don't want to see the seam on either side of the sleeve. So the goal is to have a nice crispy edge so it doesn't look like it's been sewn. So yeah, that is what the outer sleeve is, the outside of the sleeve is going to look like. It's a nice clean edge and you don't see any seams. Just make sure it's pressed really nice so it doesn't come undone. So then the next part, so you're going to pull this through, turn it inside out, and you're going to see that lining and the inner sleeve lining right there. And so what you're going to do that this see this raw edge we want to get rid of that so we're going to fold this this way fold this underneath like so pin it down because i'm going to hand stitch that to the lining so do it all the way around the inside here. And I'll do the same exact thing I did for the front part of the bodice, except I'm doing it here, only grabbing the lining and hand stitching it. So you won't see it on the outside of the sleeve, you only see it on the inside. And now I'm ready to actually just put the sleeves in the armholes and then we'll be off to trimming things off. And I'm going to serge the sleeves on so that they have a nice clean edge on the inside. So yeah, this is kind of roughly what the bodice is going to look like. So I forgot to mention that I actually finished off the neckline and the waist with a cording, but I did not do the tutorial on this because I actually have a tutorial coming soon. So hit that subscribe button so you can see it later. With the sleeves, you can see there's a drastic change between the back and the top. And I'm gonna put some big white sleeves coming out of here. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do cover buttons to go up here and then I'll do some major trim here and around the sleeves. I'm not going into detail about the cover buttons but I have a video coming on that as well and here I'm doing the button holes to put the cover buttons through. Alrighty, so I finished the bodice. I put all the buttons on in the front and I did the button holes. So I'm going to put this on the mannequin so I can visualize how I want my trim to look. So there we have all of our buttons in place and then I'm going to add the trim here. So I think I might experiment a little bit with that before I actually come to a conclusion on how I want that to look. Okay, so I did just went ahead. I didn't go through all the steps on video, but I did cut three inch wide strips this way. And then I roll, rolled 
hemmed, however you say that, the end here on the outside. And then I put two gathering stitches on the end. And then I also cut out two inch strips and I folded them a half inch to the back on both sides. And then I put gathering stitches on each side and the white color will be taken out. Um, if you saw my other video on this tutorial, you'll see why I do a different color sometimes for the gathering stitches like that. So I'm about to show you how or what I'm planning on doing with these. So yeah, I'm going to gather all of these pieces here and I'll show you what I'll do with it. to the sleeves. I think I may just put another layer of ruffles under this as well. So the trim was all pinned and I put it on the sleeves as well and now it's ready to be stitched on the machine. Okay, so I have a bit of dilemma. This, these ruffles in the front, there is this here where it's a raw edge and that is going to bug me. So I think what I'm planning on doing is using this ribbon and I'm going to stitch it on there to kind of make sure that it doesn't unravel. So you probably have a hard time seeing, but I did stitch here. Now I'm going to stitch on the other side. Okay, so here I stitched it on both sides and then when you put the ruffle down, it doesn't show. But that'll keep it from undoing and I still need to clip these little threads, but that'll keep it from fraying. Okay, so everything is set in place. I have all of my trims done and the dress is basically, it is finished basically. I just have to take these white stitches out all the way around this trim here. So this is the finished dress. I finished all the trims and the undersleeves are from another Civil War dress that I had. However, I do want to make fuller undersleeves to go underneath those big pagoda sleeves just so it fills out a little bit more. However, that will be in another video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and I will see you next time. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Tara.